In the previous video, we have generated our landscape using a couple types of tiles. We have generated tiles with grass and with some stone and dirt. I have played around with those values, so you can copy those values for the ground and for the stone to generate something like this, or you can play around and set your own values. Nevertheless, in this video, I would like to explore how we can place caves and overhangs using Berlin 2D noise. Okay, so again, we are going to visit the Understanding Perlin Noise article. And the difference is that the 1D noise is just a line, while the 2D noise is a height map that is a 2D image. So those are the pixel values. And depending on the value of the noise, the pixels are either black or white or in between in the grade scale. And those can be used as sort of a density map. So we can say that the black areas are caves and the white areas are uh, stone or uh, rather ground. And we can overlay it over our 1D noise. And when we have our ground generated using our height map, we can say that, okay, for each of those uh, tiles, Please check the parallel noise 2D value, and if this is in black area, generate in this black area a hole. So delete those chunk, uh, those tiles here, to generate the caves and overhangs. Okay, let's go to Unity and let's try generating our parallel 2D noise. Okay, first of all, I will want to create a new data for our 2D noise. So let's uh, right-click, create data, and select data, uh, and let's call it. Perlin 2D and this will be noise settings for the Perlin 2D and I'm going to set those let's set the start frequency to 0 0.06 the octaves to 3 the persistence 0.5 frequency can stay and we want to set the mean value to be 5 and max value to be 20 okay now let's go back to scripts and let's open up our world generator script Okay, actually we have the Perlin 2D data here referenced, so all we need to do is slide down below the generate map better, just have everything in one place. Let's, I, I will paste the function generate map 2D. And we are going to clear the Perlin noise 2D map, and we are going to look for each int x equals minus one map length to my, map length, just as we did with the generate map better. But also we are going to, gen uh, to loop through y, which is Perlin 2D noise range mean to Perlin noise range max for the 2D Perlin noise data for the noise. We're going to use the same noise value to be sum of noises. So we are going to use multi-octave multi noise. And all we need to have is a threshold. So for our density map for our Perlin noise 2D, we will need to set the threshold what types of values are we classifying as the values that we want to set as the uh, land or as the ground and what are discarded as air. So let's, let's go up and let's create those noise values threshold. So I will paste them maybe below our text mesh prefab. Those will be noise threshold min and noise threshold max. So basically our 2D noise will generate exactly the same values between 0 and 1. And we need to decide how we are going to treat them. Okay, so let's slide a bit uh, again to the generate Perlin 2D. And what we are going to do is we are going to check if the noise value that we have calculated is above the noise threshold mean and below the noise threshold max. And we are going to set world render set Perlin 2D. So we are going to use the, sec uh, the third tile map and we are going to set the block data to dot Perlin 2D tile base. Let me show you what it is. Okay, I will select the block data and for the Perlin 2D, this will be this light white uh, tile. So let's see how it will look like. Let's assign the method that we have created to the generate 2D button. This will be the middle button. And I will select our world object and I will select the function world generate and I will select generate map 2D. So now let's press play. And uh, actually I have forgotten to assign to the world the uh, settings for the noise for the Perlin 2D data. So I'm going to select our newly created Perlin 2D noise settings. So let's press play and let's explore the 2D noise value. Okay, this is it. So this is what we have generated. Now, as you can see, we have selected some values 
between all the values that were generated. Now we can go to our world, world generator, and let's select the values between mean 0 and max 1. And when we press our 2D noise, it generates the full uh, rectangle. And this is because we are taking all the values as tiles. Now let's set the noise threshold mean to be something like 0 0.5. And let's try generating our 2D noise. As you can see, it has generated pretty nice noise. But there is no telling what is around the corner because as you can see here, it is floating in the air. So let's set the noise threshold max to be 0 0.7, for example, and press to degenerate noise. So this is generating a something like this. And what we can set those values is let's set them to 0 0.53 value for the max. Let's set to be something like 0 0.65. And when we generate our 2D noise, as you can see, it is generating pretty similar construct. But now if we overlay it, so let's press map generate. If we overlay it and let's select our Perlin 2D and let's set the order in layer to be one, we can see that we could easily use this 3D noise thanks to the setting in our data for the Perlin noise 2D that it is generating range that is uh, in range max lower than our ground noise. So we are safe to assume that most uh, areas that are selected are in the stone or in the dirt that we have already generated and they are not placed above it. So we can easily subtract our 2D pearly noise from our landmass that we have already generated to create kind of caves and in addition to that some overhangs using what we already have generated. So let's do exactly that. Let's subtract what we have generated using the pearly noise 2D from our existing terrain. So I'm going to stop our game and I'm going to go back to our scripts and open up the world generator. Okay. So all we want to do is slide down when we have our create map 2D. And we have this uh, selection when we are uh, creating the noise value. And we are going to check if it is in range of those thresholds. So let's copy this and let's paste it inside our selection of the Y value for the generate map better. Now we have a conflict in naming, so let's call it no, uh, noise perlin 2D. And I'm going to use it in this if statement. The rate. So now, as you might recall, uh, for those values, when we have generated those values, those were meant to mean caves in our setup. So instead of calling the world render set perlin 2D, we are going to simply continue. So we're going to skip placement of our ground tile and we are going to continue to the next point so let's save it and let's see how it works in unity okay so let's press play and let's see if it works and we generate our map but there is something very wrong with it well the issue is that we are looping between y value of our data ground noise so this is 0 to 30 we are not limiting our Perlin noise 2D by the noise range 5 to 20. So let's stop it. Let's go back to our scripts, to our world generator. And we need to add two conditions here. So we need to check if Y is greater or equal to Perlin 2D data dot noise threshold mean. And if Y is less or equal to Perlin noise 2D data dot noise range max and if our condition that we have pre had previously is working correctly and only now if we save it if we go back to unity i'm going to press play and now when i generate the map our land was carved and we have some sort of caves generated in our land now it doesn't look very good but we can maybe change the offset of our ground and let's see how it looks a bit further so 1500 generate our map or maybe change even the world and change the map length to be something like 200 let's now generate our map and let's see and overall we can see that there are a couple of caves those look pretty nice especially here we can see it but in our camera view as you can see, it doesn't look very good. It doesn't look like a cave. It looks very strange. So we are going to add a, a bit of a detail here. So 
if you select our block data we can see that we have stone dark and dirt dark which i have created by changing the color of our tile for the stone as well as for the dirt so it is a bit darker so what we can do now is stop the game go to our scripts world generator and we can add at the bottom here a new method and this will be similar to the previous method to select tile we're going to select the dark tile and when we are placing our ground tiles we are always going to place a dark tile behind in the background tile map so what we are going to do is we are going to slide it up into our create map better method and we are always going to call world render set background tile we're going to select what we had in our set ground tile and paste it here and instead of calling select tile we're going to select dark tile which is our newly created method which simply selects if the y is greater or equal to stone height we're going to select the stone dark tile in other case we're going to select the dirt dark tile so basically we are always setting in the background tile map the background tiles that are darker to indicate that there is actually a cave there so let's save it let's see how it would look like let's press play in unity and when we generate our map you should see that now we have these darker areas here so that now we can indicate that actually there is a cave here let me move the camera a bit and again since we have the setup in the inspector it didn't save our map length so let's save uh, set it to be 200 let's press play and again map generate and as you can see it looks much better now we can indicate that indeed here is a cave and in my opinion it looks pretty nice the most important are the setup for the noise threshold so again it doesn't save because it is in the inspector let's set the mean value to be something like 0.53 and max value to be something like 0.65 and now if we try generating our map it should look a bit better this is what i have tested and as i can see it indeed generates a pretty nice cave somewhere around here and around here and we can see that it looks pretty nice okay thank you very much for watching the tutorial if you have enjoyed it leave a like leave a comment subscribe and if you want to support me check out my Patreon website, as well as you can check out the link to the Udemy course that I have about creating a 2D shooter game. I would really appreciate your support. And thanks a lot to all the patrons that support me. Thanks to you, I am able to create those tutorials. Take care.